Hi there and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And today we're going to be talking about the Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson Conspiracy Palette. Mostly we're just going to go through the ingredients one by one and I'll let you know their function, if there's any other additional information that I think might be interesting to you. After we are all done going through those ingredients, I will be giving you my opinion on the palette. And with that, let us just jump into the video. So eyeshadows are made up of a few different types of ingredients. You can't just put straight pigment on your eyes because it doesn't blend out. It would just stick together. You wouldn't get a whole lot of color payoff whole lot of reasons why. Base ingredients, pigments, obviously, things that would be referred to as slip enhancers to help the spreadability, binders to help it stick to the skin, different things to adjust textures, and preservatives if possible. They may not be entirely necessary, but it's always a good idea to have some sort of preservative because that help prevents any sort of growth happening on your eyeshadows. So first we're going to talk about the base ingredients, the things that help make the pigment loose enough so you get some color payoff. So the first one we will go into is mica. So mica is a pretty common one. So mica is mined, that is how it is sourced, and it is primarily sourced out of India. That seems to be where the bulk of this is coming from. And mica is mostly associated with shimmery shades, and there's different sized mica, different shaped mica. It could be flaky or finer or more coarse, and that's gonna determine what kind of look that this puts off because mica is in things like matte eyeshadow as well. So it's not just shimmery and your pigment, your mica can be coated with pigment. Mica has been known to be sourced with child labor in India specifically and unethical practices. I want to look more into this, but I have linked a couple articles down below if you want to start your search into this. The thing is, is so many companies use this. I think that uh, there are very few and far between that choose not to use mica. So this has some people that are concerned about the ethics of sourcing mica and the problem with this present in so many makeup products, there's not really a way to know by looking at the ingredients list how it is sourced. The company would have to come out and tell you. Some companies have chosen to try to ethically source. I will link a statement by L'Oreal down below in which they stated that they are trying to help ethically source this mica and help these communities where mica mining is very important to that community and supports the community. And there are companies like Lush who have chosen to get rid of mica altogether. So instead of using mica, they are using what is synthetic mica and that is also referred to as synthetic fluoro... Flogo? Pipe, that word I am not 100% positive how to pronounce, but it'll be on the screen for you to read. So according to Lush, because it is created in a lab and they have control over this, it's a lot smoother. And so you can use bigger particle sizes to yield a more sparkly eyeshadow without a risk of eye irritation. This, and you also have more purity control. So if there's any impurities to be found, you have more control over that because it is created in a lab. And this is present in two eyeshadows in the Shane Dawson Conspiracy Palette. It is in Trisha and it is in Food Video. So Trisha is obviously very sparkly, but as you can see in the Food Videos, that is more of a matte shadow. So moving on, there is also talc in here. It is mined like mica. It is not as easy to compress. So we've heard about talc coming up in the news because talc can be contaminated with asbestos. We've seen this happen with Claire's where their makeup was found to have asbestos in it from the FDA doing testing on it. This is where the cause of concern comes from using talc in products. But if it is tested, if it is sourced properly, it should not contain asbestos. And there are tests that can be done to test for the absence of asbestos. So when something is USP grade, it meets these USP requirements, which is basically an organization and they put out what is called monographs. And if something is USP grade, it will have met all of those requirements. For the talc monograph, it says it must be free of asbestos and they give you a couple of different methods to test for asbestos. But the problem is sometimes these can yield false negatives and that is a problem because obviously if you send it out and it actually has asbestos, 
that is a huge problem. FDA actually reached out to USP to try to help improve the methods to get a more accurate testing whether or not the talc contains asbestos. And there's actually a whole talc safety council. This is where it becomes hard because you need to buy from reputable people who should be sourcing everything correctly. So now we're gonna move on to boron nitride. And boron nitride is kind of interesting to me because it's literally just B, N, just the two, two together. Whereas most of these are kind of long chains. So it, boron is very similar to carbon, which is probably the most versatile element that there is. So it can create all sorts of structures similarly to how carbon can. So boron nitride is a good lubricant and that is gonna help spread this eyeshadow out and this boron nitride is also going to help the eyeshadow adhere to your skin. Laurel lysine is similar. It is also going to provide enhanced slip in this formula. And next we're going to talk about octodecal sterile stary. And this is an emollient meaning it's going to yield a soft feeling to the skin and it also has a good spread ability. There is evidence that it can be irritating to the eyes or the skin at higher concentrations, but Hopefully there is enough where it will not do that to you. I have not had any problems with it, but there is evidence to show that it could possibly be irritating. Next is silica, and this is gonna act as a texturizer to improve the texture of this eyeshadow, as well as an anti-caking agent so it will not all stick together. And it will help improve the fluidity of the makeup, so again, how it spreads, makes it look nice. A lot of these ingredients do have similar functions, there's just a few of them in here. So the next ingredient is glycerol caprolate, and this is gonna also have emollient properties and moisturizing properties, but it is antimicrobial. So this is gonna help prevent any sort of growth in this eyeshadow, and you don't need them necessarily for eyeshadows, but it's always good to include some sort of preservative just just to make sure because you never know it's gonna be introduced into the eyeshadow with people touching them, their brushes, all that kind of thing. And next is dimethicone. This is gonna help the spreadability and it also helps kind of keep it more long wearing because it is water resistant so it's not gonna break down as easily. There's also methicone which is also gonna have a similar function. They are very, very similar. It's just the groupings attached to them that change. So these will help it last longer and it also helps the spreadability as well. Next is zinc stearate. This is going to be a binder. It is a soft white powder. It's gonna help it be anti-creasing, anti-caking, anti-flaking, and is gonna help it adhere to the skin better. And the last ingredient is potassium sorbate, and this is also a preservative. Most commonly I've seen it in like little pellets, like kind of like looking like little sprinkles. And this is also gonna help prevent the growth of microorganisms. This one is particularly effective against fungi, mold, and yeast, but not necessarily preventing bacteria growth, which is why there is an additional preservative as we mentioned earlier. So there are a couple of ingredients in eyeshadows that are not in all of the eyeshadows. So for instance, tin oxide is only present in the Trisha shadow, and this is gonna help opacify it, so it's gonna make it more vibrant, and it's gonna help kind of bulk up the formula. And this is most likely coating the mica to give it whatever effect that they are going for. Also in the Trisha shadow, as well as the ranch shade, that is the very, very um, white shade, is triethoxycaprylosilane. And this is gonna help the pigments disperse on the skin as well, especially for a white shadow. It is very, it can be very chalky. So this is important to have something that is gonna help it spread better and adhere to the skin and give it an even coverage. Last ingredient that is in something on its own is gonna be in the shade Sleep Paralysis, and this is calcium sodium borosilicate, and this is present in a lot of very sparkly eyeshadows. They look kind of glass-like, they are very shimmery, which Sleep Paralysis is and it helps to give the product its desired consistency. This could be part of the reason why we are seeing this shade in particular having the most breakage. The second ingredient after mica is the octododecal sterile stearate, and if you remember, that is gonna help the product spread out on the skin. 
So maybe there's just not enough binder to hold it together to prevent it breaking as easily. Mine did not arrive broken, so I don't know if it is just more prone to breaking. I know a lot of people had problems with this. It doesn't seem to be packed as tightly either because I've only used it a little bit and the imprint is almost entirely gone. And I've only really swatched it a little bit. I used it for one eye look, more so than the other shades that I had used more of. Opposite wise, Cheese Dust and Flaming Hot, I have not worn on my eyes, but I have swatched them multiple times and they do not even look like I've touched them. So those ones are packed very, very tightly in there. That combined with the ingredients present, maybe that is why it's more sensitive to breakage. So next we're gonna move on to the colorants in here. I'm gonna give you a picture of the eyeshadow, what it looks like swatch, and as well as a picture of the colorants and their pure form, so that way you can see which colors make up the eyeshadows. I think that's kind of fun to see. So some of these have to be called pressed pigments. They can't legally be called eyeshadows in the US because the FDA does not allow certain colorants in eyeshadows. That being said, the colorants in here that are allowed in eyeshadows are allowed to be used in all cosmetic products in the EU because the way that the FDA operates for colorants is that um, adequate safety when they are introduced needed to be performed and there was reason for concern about irritation in the eyes. That's why they cannot call these specifically eyeshadows and that's the only reason why. I talked about this a lot in my Kathleen Lights video about her show Jaded Palette and kind of how I feel about marketing these as eyeshadows with like pictures and whatnot and even though they're not considered eye safe according to the FDA which is where this has been manufactured this is where probably a good portion of the sales are I'm gonna link that video up above so you can kind of hear me talk about it more so for all of these eyeshadows I'm gonna put if that colorant is not allowed in eye products in the US I am going to put a little star next to it so that way you can see which ones technically are not supposed to be eye safe if they cause you any irritation. So first is cheese dust, and this has iron oxides, there are two different ones, yellow five lake and red number six. Conspiracy has titanium dioxide, two iron oxides, chromium oxide green, and ferric ferrocyanide. Diet Cola has aluminum powder, titanium dioxide, manganese of violet. Diet Root Beer has three different iron oxides, Red 40 Lake. Flamin' Hot has Red 30 Lake, Red 7 Lake, and Red number six. Food Videos has Yellow 10 Lake, Yellow 5 Lake, Chromium Hydroxide Green, and Titanium Dioxide. Now it's important to note that this is a yellow eyeshadow and the yellow coloring is what is not eye safe. There are no red colorants in here that are technically not eye safe according to the FDA. Illuminati has Iron Oxides, Titanium Dioxide, and Chromium Oxide Green. Just a Theory has Titanium Dioxide and Iron Oxide. My Pills has Titanium Dioxide, Red 30 Lake, three different Iron Oxides, and Red 28 Lake. My Rides here has Iron Oxide, one of them, and Titanium Dioxide. Not A Fact has Red 7 Lake, Red 28 Lake, Ultramarines, and two different Iron Oxides. Pigment has Titanium Dioxide, Red 7 Lake, Red 30 Lake, and one Iron Oxide. And Ranch, it consists of only Titanium Dioxide, so just a white pigment. Sleep Paralysis has Titanium Dioxide, Iron Oxides, three of them, Red 28 Lake, and Ferric Ferrocyanide. Spiraling has two different iron oxides, titanium dioxide and aluminum powder. Tanacon has titanium dioxide and three different iron oxides. Trisha has titanium dioxide, red 28 lake, red seven lake. What's the T has chromium hydroxide green, titanium dioxide and two different iron oxides. So you may notice that I am not in the clothes that I've been wearing in the rest of this video and that is because when I was creating all those little color images with my own photos of the eyeshadows, I did notice that I too had one of the fibers that people have been finding. So I had made a video previously to this, if you haven't seen, I'll link below, about 
what I found, what I think happened, how I feel about that. So you can watch that if that is a concern to you. That way I can address kind of the hairy eye shadow situation. So watch that first if you have not seen that. Now we can move on to the rest of the video. My thoughts on the palette. So first of all, this palette retailed for $52, which isn't the cheapest palette in the world, but I also don't feel is like the most expensive palette in the world. And I bought mine off of Beautylish. I had no shipping problems. Also, they shipped it out very, very soon after I ordered it. That was the first site I went on, so I didn't have any problems ordering. And the reason why I will always go through Beautylish is they offer free $35 shipping. I think Morphe and Jeffree Stars is a lot higher, so if you can order from Beautylish, I would highly recommend them. I have used them multiple times in the past, and I ended up ordering it on the Friday at launch, and it got to my house by Sunday. So they're very, very efficient. Now, the packaging on this palette, I love. This is probably the most unique packaging I bought. I love the metal detail. So packaging, I'm obsessed with. So as for the shades, so the top row of shades is kind of like my wheelhouse. Just a theory, I love. This one is probably one of my favorite shade in here. It reminds me a lot of I think it's marzipan from the chocolate to the chocolate bar from Too Faced, the original one. So those ones I could use all the time. That top row is basically very, very neutral. You can use it all the time. The Tanacon and the Diet Root Beer show up on me, but I think it's only because I have such fair skin. I know I don't know if people with a darker skin tone would be able to use these maybe as a base, but for me, I can use them pretty regularly but there's not really any other neutral shades that are darker so if you have a darker skin tone and you were looking for more neutrals this probably isn't going to be the palette for you the next row i really like conspiracy i really like the greens i haven't really used pigment or food videos trisha cheese dust flaming hot i will have to play with them more but they have swatch okay I will put up a picture of the swatches on the screen so you could see how they swatch. That doesn't really determine everything, but just kind of gives you an idea of what the colors look like. And the bottom row is very like holiday season to me. The black's good for a smoky eye. The Illuminati is really, really nice. Um, I love Not A Fact and Sleep Paralysis I actually really like too. And like I said earlier, I know a lot of people have had problems with breakage in it, but I personally didn't have any problems. Overall, I really do enjoy the shadows in here. I don't think that they are the most blendable eyeshadows I've ever used in my eye in my life. I have to work really hard to blend them out. That being said, the pigment does stick down a lot more. So I think I will not get as much use out of that middle row with the bright colors, but all the other colors are pretty neutral and I could use. And then hopefully the other ones, I will get inspired to use them. So overall, I do like this palette. I don't mind that. I don't mind the price that I ended up paying for it. So my favorite shades in here, I love Just a Theory, but I could get that somewhere else. Not a fact. Sleep Paralysis, Conspiracy, Illuminati. All those ones are the more unique shades. Obviously, no, none of these shades are super, super unique. You could find them in other palettes, but those are the ones that made me like this palette the most. Some of the brighter shades, the more like matte, like red, orange, those ones aren't exciting to me because we've seen those in a lot of palettes, so that's why I like these other shades a lot better. So if the color story speaks to you, I would get it. It'll be good. Mind if you have a heavy hand that it may not be as easy to blend out. That's just my opinion. If you are going to buy it, I would buy it off of Beautylish. And most likely I will end up using this with other palettes. It doesn't seem to be a palette where I would bring it to travel. A, it's bulky. B, it's not the most versatile palette. So that, but I do enjoy this palette. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will leave a link to where you could buy it from or sign up for the email list down below because it's sold out at the moment. And I will leave links to my resources, of course. And with that, I will see you in my next video.